Hallelujah. Can we lift up our hands and give thanks to God for another time, another opportunity to be blessed by his word. Can we show gratitude to God for his benevolence and his graciousness to us? I mean, each session, you know, God's word coming to us abundantly, light breaking forth in our spirits. Can we give thanks to God? I want you to show gratitude to God. I want you to do it from all your heart and say, Father, we are grateful. You know, how God shows us his goodness is not just by blessing us with material things. The Bible says, taste the word and see that the Lord is good. You know, the word of God is an evidence of his goodness and benevolence to us. Can you lift up your hands and give him thanks and give him praise and say, Father, thank you for your benevolence, for your graciousness to us. We give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. And Father, as we go into your word this morning, we ask that your word will gain entrance into our hearts and light will burst forth in our spirits in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Before you take your seat, I want you to appreciate my spiritual parents for this huge privilege. Daddy, mommy, thank you so much for this huge privilege. I do not take it for granted. I mean, um, I say this under God, and I'm saying this not just because I'm ministering here. It's what I say in my extension, you know, that um, all I am as a believer and as a minister of the gospel, what is working for me today, the knowledge of God's word working for me today, I learned it from daddy and mommy. What is working for me as a believer and as a minister, hallelujah. And um, I want us to celebrate them once again for the huge investment they have made into me and into us. Come on, celebrate daddy and mommy. Hallelujah. Before you have a seat, I want us to celebrate, you know, daddy's, um, daddy and mommy's covenant friend. Daddy, um, daddy Festus and mommy Hugo will celebrate you. Pastors and ministers celebrate you, sir. Um, uh, please, we may have a seat in God's presence. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I have the huge privilege of bringing us God's word on overcoming the peculiar challenges of the faith confronting believers in our time. And I want, us to, I want to start by saying that, you know, God is mindful of us in the time that we are in, in this generation that we are in, God is mindful of us. He has seen this generation ahead, and, you know, he has made provision for us to overcome the challenges that will surface in this generation in his word. We know that God's word is eternal, God's word is timeless. So God saw our generation ahead. He knew the challenges that will come up in this generation far ahead from eternity. And in his benevolence and providence, he has made provision for us to overcome the challenges of faith in this time that we are in. Hallelujah. And I want us to know that, you know, the challenges that come against our faith is actually coming against the exploits of our faith. We understand that, you know, we make exploits by faith. You know, we make exploits by faith. We stand out by faith. And so the challenges that are waging against believers in this time, in this generation, is actually against our exploits, the exploits of our faith. We see in Hebrews chapter 11, you know, it's documented the, the annals of the heroes of faith, the things they did by their faith. Who through faith, they subdued kingdoms, they wrought righteousness, they did the great things in their time by their faith. So generation to generation, we see exploits by faith. So what the devil is against in this our time, in this our generation, is our faith. Is against our faith. He knows that it's true that faith that we're going to run exploit. The greater works that Jesus wants us to do, how are we going to do it? We're going to do it by our faith. It takes faith to do the greater works. And I don't want us to um, think about this generation and make excuses about this generation. You know, it's possible to think that the challenges we are facing in this generation, Jesus didn't face it in his time. That's why he lived the kind of life he lived. It's possible to think that all those people in Hebrews 11, in their own time, they didn't have social media. In their own time, they didn't have this, they didn't have that. And I tell you that if we make excuses for um, the things, the peculiarities of our generation, will not be able to harness the grace of God to live above the challenges of this generation. So it's not for us to make excuses. The possibilities of the faith of Jesus in his day is still our possibilities today. Hallelujah. 
the possibilities of the faith of the apostles in their day. It still are possibilities today. Hallelujah. So the faith has not reduced in quality and potency. It's still the same faith. The same like precious faith. Hallelujah. So if their faith worked, our faith should work. And, you know, God didn't give us, you know, to do lesser than them. He said greater works. Greater works. Hallelujah. So I want us to know that one of the importance of faith, there are many reasons why faith is important, but one of the importance of faith, which is relevant to the theme for this convention, for this conference, is that it's true faith that we overcome. We overcome by faith. The triumphant church is an overcoming church. It's true faith that we overcome. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Our faith is the victory that overcometh the world. So how do we overcome, you know, anything and everything of this world order? Our faith. Our faith is the victory. Our faith is the overcomer. So we have to guard our faith. To live as victors and to be triumphant indeed in this present world, we have to guard our faith. We have to guard against the challenges of our faith. Praise God forevermore. So it's very important for us to live above the challenges of faith in this generation. Hallelujah. So the challenges of faith are coming to, to make us live a defeated life. So we understand that it takes faith to live a victorious life. So challenges of faith, they are coming to make us live a defeated life. To be victims instead of being victors. So that's the reason why, you know, our faith has to be vibrant in this age and in this generation that we are. So there are common challenges of faith in this generation. I'll be looking at them from God's word. Um, if I want to summarize them, you know, I want us to consider the parable of the sower. The sower sowed the word, and then for time, I'll just paraphrase, he sowed the word, and then some fell by the wayside. The bird came, took them. Some fell on the ground, on a rocky ground, and then it didn't take root. And because it didn't take root, you know, when persecutions and afflictions arose, for the word's sake, you know, the person by and by was offended. And then, you know, some fell among the thorns, and then the cares of this world, it choked everything up. Hallelujah. And then there was one that fell on the good ground, and then it thrived. So number one challenge of faith in this generation that I want to mention is what, you know, um, Pastor Lalu shared about is having a pastor. And I just want to say one thing about that, having a pastor. In Romans chapter 10, if you see verse 13, having a pastor or not having a pastor could be a challenge. Of faith. Romans chapter 10, if you see verse 13. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? It's talking about prayer of faith. So he said, how can they pray, you know, without first believing? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not had? So he says the hearing of faith precedes the believing of faith, which precedes the prayer of faith. And how shall they hear without a preacher? So there's no hearing of faith without a preacher. And then verse 14 says, how then and how shall they preach except they be sent? So not just any preacher, sent one. And not just a person that is called of God, but sent to you. Sent to you. So we can't teach faith without teaching about your sent man of God, your sent preacher. Every believer has a sent preacher. Faith does not grow. It doesn't develop listening to any preacher. Your own saint man of God. Your own saint preacher. And so we'll read Romans 10, 17 in this context. So let's read Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the preaching of the word of God from your saint man of God. Say amen to that. By the preaching of the word of God from your saint man of God. If you see Amplified, it says, so then faith cometh by hearing. So faith comes by hearing what is told. And what is heard comes by the preaching of the message that came from the lips of Christ, the Messiah himself. So what is heard had to be preached unto you. So having a pastor and sitting down, you know, staying to your pastor is important for the hearing of faith. 
So anybody that does not have a pastor cannot hear. The hearing of faith will not come to the person. The person can hear one or two messages. He can make notes. But what makes for faith, you know, is having a pastor. Hearing God's word consistently from the mouth of your pastor. Say amen to that. And the second challenge of faith is the challenge of ignorance of the word. Ignorance of the word. Romans 10, 17 tells us how faith comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Ignorance of the word. So without God's word, faith cannot come to us. You know, we have received the measure of faith. We have the ability to believe God. You know, the I can believe God is on the inside of us. But we need the, the stimuli of faith. The stimuli of faith is the word. The word of God comes to stimulate our ability, to stimulate our spiritual senses, to see and hear what God is saying to us. So ignorance of the word is a challenge of faith in this generation. And when I say ignorance of the word, I'm, I'm talking about first about unavailability to hear the word. Because for the hearing of faith to come to you, you have to listen to the word. So a believer that is not available for the word cannot listen to the word and cannot hear the word. The hearing of the word of faith is hearing with your heart. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. So unavailability for the word. And at times, this unavailability for the word might be, you know, doing legitimate things. One can be busy with legitimate things and not available for the word. You know, there are times that the devil doesn't tempt believers. We just, you know, commit to this sin. The devil just gets one busy with legitimate things so that you don't have time for the word. And he knows that, you know, with time, if you don't have time for the word, some other things that he's not even telling you not to do, you know, to do rather, you know, you have time for them. So being busy with legitimate things, not available for the word, it causes ignorance of the word, and that's a challenge of faith. And for some people, they are available for the word, but they are not devoted to the word. So I'm taking the two together, devotion to the word. You know, daddy was still telling us yesterday that revelation is not just light coming to you. Revelation also means that there can be a greater intensity of light. So revelation is not just having a flicker of light, it's also intensity. So some people settle with flicker of light. Light comes to them, they are jumping around. And they are like that guy that, you know, the, the, the seed was sown into the ground. It fell on good ground. The Bible said the guy received it with joy. So he was jumping around. He got revelation, but it's flicker. But the Bible says that, you know, um, we have a more sure word of prophecy. Wherein we should do well that we should take it as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Until the day dawns. So he's not just talking about flicker. He's talking about intensity. So there has to be devotion to the word for the light to keep coming. That's faith. So faith is not just, you know, an iota of light or a flicker of light. Faith is, you know, the intensity of light from God's word in our spirit. Say amen to that. So devotion to the word. So for some people, the challenge is how to process the word that is coming to them. They are in the church like G2 where they are fed and fed with the word, but the challenge is processing the word, which is meditation on the word. Apart from coming to the general assembly, listening to God's word, availability to the word, for the word, you know, you going back to your closet to sit down with the word. To sit down with the word. And that's how faith grows. You sit down with the word. Like the Berean church. The Bible says, as Apostle Paul was, you know, a big man of God, then they went back to consider those things he said, whether they were so. So devotion to the word. Devotion to the word. Praise God forevermore. So faith is a devotion. Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, it's impossible, you know, to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So it's impossible to live a life of faith without devotion, without diligently seeking God. Without diligently seeking God, without devotion. Devotion to the word, devotion to prayer. Because we can't separate the word from prayer. Hallelujah. Yes. We can't separate the word from prayer. The preaching of God's word comes from a prayed of spirit. So we can't separate the word from prayer. And you don't truly receive the word into your spirit if you don't pray the word in. So we can't separate the word from the prayer. So devotion to prayer, devotion to the word. You know, the Bible tells us in Jude 20, you know, that building up ourselves on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So we pray in the word. We listen to the word. We pray in the word. Before we hear the word, we pray. After the word, we pray. So devotion, a life of devotion. Praise God forevermore. And then another challenge of faith in this generation is pride. Pride. 
you know, we are in a generation that everybody asks their own truth. So when they come to church, they look at you face to face and say, who are you to tell me the truth? As for me, this is my truth. But we understand from God's word that God's word is the truth. God's word is not a truth out of many truths. God's word is the truth. John 17, 17, sanctify them with thy truth. Thy word is what? Thy word is truth. God's word is the truth. So one has to be meek to learn God's word. A proud person, faith cannot come to a proud man. In Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, one of the many scriptures, one of the four scriptures that talks about the just shall live by faith. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. So anybody whose soul is lifted up, faith cannot come. It takes meekness. He said, let us lay aside every filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and let's receive with meekness the engrafted word of God. So a highly opinionated believer cannot learn God's word. Because the meek, he will teach his way. So he highly open anything. He can't learn God's word. He can come to church to judge what the pastor is saying. He didn't say it well. He didn't say, this is what may I believe. He can't learn the word. He can have notes. In fact, he can know a lot. And that's why you see some people on social media, they argue a lot. But they don't have faith. Some of them are believers. They have the ability. But faith, when it comes to the stimulus, they don't have. Because they are too eddy. Too highly opinionated. So it takes an humble man to learn from God's word. Let's say amen to that. It takes meekness. Meekness. Let me show you one scripture to that. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which you had of us. So Apostle Paul was giving thanks to God for them. He said you received not as the word of men. But as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. And that's why when we preach and teach the word, we substantiate it in God's word. It's not our personal opinion. So it must be received that this is the word. This is God's word. He said, therefore, they believed. So he said, which effectually worketh also in you their belief. So correct perception of the word. And then humility to learn the word. It led to them believing the word. And the word was working in them. Let's say amen to that. And another challenge of faith in this generation is inactivity. We're in a generation that there's so much knowledge. Even in our day, you can search, you know, you can do, you can do search engines, search Google and search on any Bible topic. So knowledge is available. Messages are available online on YouTube. Knowledge is available, but people are not given to acting on the word. Acting on the word. Acting on the word. You know, um, Grandpa just thought, thought on, on praying. The blessing of praying is in praying. Hallelujah. Acting on the word. Acting on the word. Hear and do. It's not the hearers that are blessed, but the doers of the word. So inactivity is a challenge of this generation. We have so many people that know the word in their head, but they do not know it in their heart. Because art knowledge of the word comes by practicing the word. And that's why, you know, true renewal of the mind is by practicing the word. Meditating in the word without practicing in the word will not bless the heart, will not bless the life. So true renewal of the mind, true blessing is by practicing the word. Hallelujah. So inactivity. So how do we overcome that? Meditate in the word and do the word. Meditate on the word of God and do the word. The end of meditation is doing the word. Joshua 1.8. He says, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do. That you may observe to do. In meditation, we see what God wants us to do. And then we'll do it. And that's how we are blessed indeed. Hallelujah. Another challenge of faith in this generation is offense. Offense. We are in a generation that are quick to be offended. And when I say offense here, it's in two foot. Offense at God and offense at people. We are in a generation that some people are offended at God. Offended at God. I prayed for this person. It didn't work. It means that it doesn't work. <laughs> it means that it doesn't work. Somebody dear to me, something happened to the person after so much prayer, then it means that, you know, prayer doesn't work. That's not it. Some people are offended at God because what they think should happen, it didn't happen. They practice the word and they expect that, okay, they expect some results and therefore they give up. They're offended at God. Some said, I'm not coming to church any longer because of one thing. 
God's word is greater than our experiences. Hallelujah. It's greater. There's nobody that can say because of your experiences, you know, God's word is not true. God's word is true, irrespective of your experiences. And if you stay in the word, your experience will align to the word. So the word always works. So some people are offended at God. So stay on the word. Bible says, blessed are the people that love the law. He said, nothing shall offend them. Stay on the word. An offense at people. So we understand that it takes love for our faith to work. Anyone who takes offense, who is, you know, in bitterness, who is nursing unforgiveness, it's in that faith. The person may have had the word, but it will not make the faith to be operative. It won't make it to work. I love the way Galatians 5, 6 puts it in Amplified Version. Galatians 5, 6. For if we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith activated and energized and expressed and working through love. We can't separate faith and love. Faith is energized through love, is activated through love, is expressed through love, is working through love. It means for your faith to work, you have to pay attention to your love work. You can't entertain unforgiveness in your heart. So that the investment of your devotion to the word and the prayer will not waste. Even in relations between husband and wife, the Bible says that a man, a husband that does not honor the wife and deal with her according to knowledge will forfeit answers to prayers. No matter the investment into prayers. So, do, so that the devotion to the word, the investment in the word and the prayer will not waste. You know, one has to walk in love. You can't imagine coming to a conference like this, you know, the sacrifices you made and the sacrifices we made as a church for you to enjoy a conference like this and you go back and then an unforgiveness. No, no, no. That's not profitable. No. Glory to God. And then another challenge of faith in this generation is impatience. 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 In the account of the parable of the sower in Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. If you see verse 15. Luke chapter 8 verse 15. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience they bring forth fruit with patience and in hebrews chapter 6 he said we should be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises inherit the promises hebrews 10 he said having done the will of god we have need of patience having had the word of god you know having believed the word of god having you know acted on the word of god you still have need of patience and he that believeth shall not make haste. So in a generation that everything is fast, we want it fast. We want it fast. I'm believing God now and I want it to manifest now, 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 now. Forgetting that faith is not an emergency tool. If you have not developed your faith in times of peace, then how do you want to release your faith in times of trouble? So in times of trouble, people quickly want to use the faith they have not developed. They quickly get, you know, a word and say that, okay, I want it to manifest now. So faith works with patience. It produces with patience. So the impatient, you know, we rush out of faith room. The impatient. He can enjoy the fulfillment of promises. So you have need of patience, having believed God and having acted on the word. Praise God forevermore. And lastly, a challenge of faith is materialism. Materialism. Faith is not just a tool to get things from God. Faith is not just a tool to get things from God. In Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1, one of the elementary principles of doctrine of Christ is faith towards God. So faith is towards God. It's not towards things. If you see someone that claims to be in faith and the person is materialistic, it's not the Bible kind of faith. The Bible kind of faith doesn't take your heart away from God toward things. The Bible kind of faith endears you to God. You will have things, but it endears you to God. Your focus is on God. Your devotion is to God. So it's more than a formula that you need something. You need a car. You need this. Start confessing it every morning, and you become obsessed with what you need. Mm -mm, that's not the biblical faith. Faith makes you obsessed to God. You're praying. You're dancing to God. Your focus is on God. 
You are singing his names. You are praising his names. You are reading the word. You are praying. It endears you to God. We walk with God by faith. So the biblical faith doesn't make us materialistic. The biblical faith makes us devoted to God. It endears us to God. And then it changes us. Before faith changes things, it changes you. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 9, it says, receiving the end of our faith, which is what? The salvation of our souls. Your transformation. When Abraham believed God, you know, for Isaac, at the end of that faith process, Abraham became a father of many nations. Much more than the Isaac. Abraham got more than Isaac in believing God. He was a changed man. He was a transformed man. Because while trusting God for Isaac, in Genesis 15, he said, me, you have not given a child. Is it this Eliezer of Damascus? Now, he started with things. He was obsessed about getting a child. But at the end of the day, he was ready to give up the same child he got from God. So faith endears us to God. It makes our hearts devoted to God. By the time you get it, compared to what has happened to you, it will become so small. So there's no element of proud. You can't be proud over that thing. So when God is asking for it, it's easy to give it back. Because at the end of the day, you got more than that thing. You were endeared to God. It brought you into devotion with God. So it changes us. So the end of our faith is more than what we get. The end of our faith is the salvation of our souls. It's our transformation. Is our becoming. For when God called Abraham, you know, he called him. He said, I have made you a father of many nations. He was Abraham, an exalted father. And then his becoming was in faith. Our becoming is in, is in faith. Between where you are and the future God has revealed to you, your becoming is in faith. So now you may have one need or the other, one thing you're trusting God for or the other. That's not the end of your faith. God actually uses those things that we need to catch our attention. So the focus is more than that. But because you are believing God, in fact, for most of us, the time that God has our attention most is when we have a need. So the need is a bit. So it's not the end in itself. It's a bit to get your attention. When he now has your attention, he will give you something bigger, which is your destiny, which is your transformation. Hallelujah. Were you blessed by God's word this morning? I want us to lift up our hands and give thanks to God and say, Father, we are grateful. Thank you, precious Father for equipping us with what we need to overcome, to live triumphantly in this present generation. Bless our eyes the see, bless our ears the hear. Many righteous men, they have desired to see and hear these things, but it has been given unto us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Can you lift up your hands and give thanks to God and say, Father, thank you, thank you. We give you thanks, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen.